Good afternoon. Welcome to Voice of Rio Grande. My name is Rebecca Long and I'm sitting in for Dr. Johnston today and I'm very excited to be with Miss Tammy Brabham. Tammy is the president of Brabham Family Enterprises and she's joining us today for a chat. And We had some time to talk at lunch and, and I just think your whole story is, is very exciting and inspiring and it's always wonderful to, to talk to women. And, and so let's just start by maybe telling the audience a little bit about your company, Brabham Family Enterprises, everything that that involves, and sort of all that you do um, with your, your corporation. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, we've been in business in Gallia County since um, 1980, actually started in 1976, but here in Gallia County in 1980. Um, we've um, grown and, and changed a lot over the years. We started as a, a emergency road service and then uh, automotive repair, um, added towing, and um, about six years ago we added a, a second location where we do um, strictly commercial truck repair and service uh, part sales. Um, just this year we opened a second automotive repair shop in Gallipolis. Um, we have about we have three locations and stay pretty busy most of the time. So your original location was out in the 850 sort of Bidwell area yes. is that right? And and so for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with with Reds when you're on the bypass you you can't miss you there um, in the industrial park. They got place industrial park and you guys built a pretty nice facility there a few years ago. Yes, that was a that was a pretty big project for us. It took a couple years to get all that done and just almost 2 years by the time we got into it. And since then, in uh, 2010, uh, we've been joined by Baxter's Harley Davidson, and then we have the new uh, Love's Truck stop across the road. Our area out there is growing, and, and we're really excited about the growth there. Uh, we were talking a little bit about um, that area at lunch, and, and just years ago when I was growing up, it was just kind of considered way out there, and it's really the growth that we've seen there is, is absolutely tremendous and so good for the community that we're just bringing in more opportunities in this area. I think you made a comment at lunch about business brings business, and, and mm. that's why we're here, support each other, and that's, it's important for everyone we do that. Yeah, we've um, been successful with a few businesses there and talking about women-owned business, uh, Lorraine Walker opened uh, Silver Bridge Coffee there, um, which she started in her home garage, I believe, but she uh, opened a, a new place there on 850 near the industrial park and we've uh, got two new buildings out there right now uh, with new businesses going in. Um, it's a pretty exciting area. It is, and we are actually selling Silverbridge Coffee now on campus, and so that's been very exciting, very exciting. It's yeah. nice to go to other cities, travel a little bit, and see the Silverbridge Coffee and another From wonderful. a woman-owned business in Gallia woman County. another business. Yes. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you have a woman-owned company and in, in sort of a man-driven field um, with the trucking and the repair and the towing, and so what has that been like um, establishing yourself in that sort of line? I get that question a lot, Rebecca. It's, um, it's been a real challenge. Um, I grew up in the truck world. My dad had a truck shop most of my life, um, was most of my childhood years. Um, so to marry into that life was not a surprise, but to become the sole owner, that was a little bit of a shock. Um, uh, at the time, um, I had a son that was uh, mature enough to help me keep things uh, uh, keep things going and uh, we have spent 18 years growing um, with him as my second in command. Um, he's grown up in the business and um, a, a lot of challenges I have to say from from all areas, employees, customers, uh, vendors um, and you know I finally learned that when you're challenged by uh, when you hit that wall you just need to know when to let a man step up and do your job. <laughs> Um, it, there's just people that won't deal with a, whim, a woman and then um, I'd say that a lot of times um, I, I've been pleased that, that, that people are accepting, uh, probably sometimes with a little humor, uh, but uh, I think I finally proved myself. I was going to say, did you feel like you really had to prove yourself more than a man ever would have in that industry? Uh, yeah, I, you know, um, one of my customers told me, um, probably 10 years after I took over the business, he said, he said, um, people were really waiting for you to fail. And uh, in my world, failure is not an option. 
So, mm -hmm. so you have three children. I do. Um, a son and two daughters. And, and so talk about what it's been like. We discussed this a little bit at lunch to try to inspire your daughters to sort of chase that dream and, and be strong, independent women regardless of the situation. Wow, how do you raise an independent daughter? <laughs> We're trying to figure that out, actually. Yeah. I'm taking suggestions right now for my seven-year-old, yes. I think I got to that point and realized that I had successfully done it without realizing that I had done it. Mm -hmm. um, my oldest daughter is a business owner, and she has um, uh, operated a, a business since she was probably about 20, 21, 22 and uh, broke out into an uh, actual location in 09. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that because we're all for shameless plugs. For, for those of you that don't know, talk about your daughter's business. She owns the Wounded Goose Restaurant at Bidwell um, on 554. She also does catering and um, uh, she's been here at the university quite a bit. She caters a lot of uh, functions uh, all over. Um, she started the restaurant in 09. She's coming up on her seventh anniversary. And uh, one of her, uh, one of her, the best ideas she's had to date has gone over like gangbusters. She's about three years now into her Friday Night Wild Game Night. I hear about it everywhere I travel in the region. Oh, you're the county that has Wild Game Night. Yeah. Now, there's some dishes that even she won't eat, but they go over well. <laughs> but like rattlesnake. Yeah. But, speaking of, Mike and I were having the snake conversation a little bit ago when I showed up for this. They had a fake snake on the desk. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, the rattlesnake was not my favorite. <laughs> Um, where does she get the ideas for some of her dishes? I, I have no idea. <laughs> she, when, you know, she's the, I say she's the foodie in the family. Yeah. Um, yeah. The rest of us are, are all car and truck driven. And uh, we got one uh, little chick in the family it's that was food di driven. And she's uh, very good at thinking outside the box. Um, I don't know where she gets her ideas, but they're great. They are neat, and the wild game has been, been very, very popular. Um, let me ask you this. We have a lot of students here that are pursuing business degrees. What kind of advice would you give to someone pursuing a degree in business, um, primarily females, but also males who are entering the, the business world? What kind of advice would you give to someone who wanted to own their own business? First of all, know for sure that that's what you want to do and that you want to spend your life doing it. Um, a commitment, it, it is a commitment, and um, sometimes people are too easy to turn their back on a commitment. If I don't like it, I can quit. But re you really need to make a commitment to that business. Follow your dream, but make practical and common sense decisions. Um, again, failure is not an option. Once you start, plunge in and don't look back. Don't look back. If you're going forward, don't look back. Don't ever look back. Look forward. Over the past several years, you've had lots of um, different positions and been very involved in the community. I know you were on the chamber, you were chamber president, um, have worked some with the CIC. You want to talk a little bit about some of the other aspects of the community that you've been involved in? Yeah, I, I guess I got involved with that a little bit by accident. Um, a friend that dragged me into some volunteer things and it quickly turned into a lot more than just volunteer things. Um, the chamber was a big motivator uh, for me and I think it uh, helped me grow. Um, service to the community, we did a lot of functions. We did the uh, 4th of July Festival, um, the Chili Festival, uh, little events here and there and business meetings and uh, I think that was uh, helped me grow a lot. I am a true believer in service, community service, um, serving others that need that have a need. Um, Rotary, and we did some great projects in Rotary. Um, I have backed out of some of those projects that, uh, because they became so time consuming. Uh, I like to see people getting involved and I, I would have to say that my kids are really good about community involvement um, from the fire department to schools and churches and uh, there's so much need in our community and the world. And your son-in-law is carrying on the family tradition, oh, has just chamber taken over as chamber president. From your husband. From my husband, great job. who was very excited to, I mean, very sad to hand that over. Yeah. Yeah. A, a as big, was I. A big responsibility, but such a vital part of the community. Yeah, it, it can consume a lot of your time. And um, I'm, I'm really excited that I have a son-in-law that is excited about serving the community and uh, being a motivator in business. 
Um, Josh uh, has aspirations to own a business one day, and, and I hope I can help him or at least see him attain that. Well, he's in the right family <laughs> to help make that happen. Um, so it's safe to say that as we're talking to young people who are aspiring in business, not even just to be an entrepreneur, but as they sort of work out in organizations, getting involved in these types of organizations is vital not only to the community and to self-growth and organizational growth, to just personal development. And networking is, mm -hmm. um, net networking with other people in business, in your community, uh, in your industry, in your state. Uh, even at a national level, it's, you can't replace it. There's nothing else that replaces networking. And I'd have to say that uh, probably the first 18 years that I was active in a business, um, I was raising a family, didn't have time to get involved in those things. And the first involvement I had was, uh, even before the chamber, was my uh, state um, towing association. And uh, a lot of my business was geared toward towing. And that put me in touch with other towers around the state and legislative issues. Um, we did social things, but we did a lot of uh, educational things for tower for towers. About 2,200 towers in the state of Ohio, oh, wow. and then uh, gave me the ability to meet other towers across the nation. Collaborate, um, share ideas, share war stories. Absolutely, all the the laws in different states mm -hmm. and how they differ, and. Um, I would advise anybody and everybody in business to be involved with their industry association if they have one. Very I mean, important. Nearly every industry does, and uh, and that you know that kind of showed me uh, what was out there when I got ready to get involved with the chamber, and uh, then that led to the CIC, which is Community Improvement Corporation, and that's actually um, economic development, and. Um, a job to, Another vital part of every yes, community. Yes, job growth and uh, bringing people to our community, uh, improving the jobs, um, and giving giving our children a reason to come back home after they finish college, mm -hmm. if they leave for college. But <laughs> but one of uh, one of the things that so many of the parents and grandparents here um, have problems with is the fact that their children and grandchildren leave to mm -hmm. go to school and they don't come back mm -hmm. or they leave for a good job and they don't come back and we just we so hate to see our children leave our community. Absolutely and you know for young people coming up there are always organizations that they can get involved with. Contact your local chambers, contact your local rotaries, you know there are always ways for young people to get involved and a lot of our organizations on campus, our service organizations, um, they kind of connect with other chapters and, and so I would encourage all young people and it also looks great on a resume. <laughs> it does and I understand that um, when a university is looking at you um, or any type of school uh, they're looking at what you've done for service through even through high school key club and uh, myself I was on the yearbook staff and uh, several different things um, I didn't know what service was when I was that young I just thought it was something to get me away from my house. <laughs> yeah, or got you out of study hall. Yes, yes, that's yes, what I did. Yes. Um, but uh, you can't do it. You, you really can't get out and get involved enough and be seen, if, especially if you want to do business. Well, and we tell a lot of our students, grades are important. They're very important. But beyond that is, can you balance life? Can you balance your class and your social life and your service life? And, and so those are skills that, that students need before they come to you. So as an employer, how many employees do you have within your companies? I think I'm about 38, about 38, between 38 and 40 in a given day. So what do you look for when you're hiring a new employee? What kind of skills do you look for beyond they can serve the function for which you're hiring, whether it's a mechanic or a driver, beyond that, what kinds of things are important as an the employer? The thing I complain about most is what I call the three F's. It's focus, follow through, and finish. So when I give you something to do, I want you to focus on it. And I want you to follow through. Don't come to me next week and say, oh, I, for I forgot to finish that. I, I see a lot of uh, uh, people that they can't do the three Fs. Um, no critical thinking. Um, how do you learn that? I'm not sure. Uh, if you come up with that answer, <laughs> you can retire from Brabham Family Enterprises and just do that. But the ability to uh, make decisions to think, 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 think things through um, some uh, not only critical thinking but common sense and and using logic 
um, uh, good handwriting is always a plus. <laughs> but <laughs> printed um, in cursive, yeah, yeah. And we have a joke at work that we don't we don't discriminate against the handicapped. We have plenty of them working for us, <laughs> and that's usually a joke about the against the people that have bad handwriting. Bad but, handwriting, yeah. Um, you know, we've had so many so many different kinds of people and everyone has a different personality and I think the older and more experienced I get the better I get at finding a place that fits for the person instead of trying to fit them into the place I already you know um, they don't they may not have the exact qualities that I was looking for but maybe they fit somewhere else and realizing that you can't make someone fit a mold that they are that they're not set for. You have to find that skill set and then apply it appropriately. Use the tools that they have. Don't mm -hmm. try to make them have tools that they don't have. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's different. What is the greatest challenge that you faced as a business owner in this area? Ooh. Mm. I think um, I think my biggest challenge for the, over the last 10 years is been finding employees. I, mean, good, good, I think good, reliable it is. employees. Um, people that want more than a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, people that want to work, not just have a job. And um, you know, a good, uh, good um, mental attitude toward mm -hmm. coming to work. And uh, a th um, that, and that's kind of negative, isn't it? <laughs> Well, but we hear that a lot as we talk to different employers in the area, finding people who have passion for what they're doing, who buy into what they're doing, who aren't just punching a time clock. Um, and, and how do you teach that? And that's, you know, that's something that we in education are always talking about. How can we better prepare our graduates? How do you teach mm -hmm. passion? How do you teach those soft skills? I think when, when a person's seeking work or seeking uh, employment, the, it's, what's important is that they look for something that they care about and they'll have a better time fitting in. Um, if my applicants um, love what I do, then they're gonna fit well in, mm -hmm. into my jobs. But um, if they're trying to squeeze into something that doesn't fit them, then they're not going to be happy and neither am I. Right, absolutely. So, so you've got this new location on Eastern Avenue, prime real estate we talked about right there on the S curve. And what kinds of things are you doing there? Is it similar to what you're doing at your 850 location? Um, it's all automotive service. Okay. Um, uh, Bidwell is automotive and uh, our tow shop both and we do all of our fleet work on our own trucks there. Gal Place is strictly a retail location for uh, automotive repair and light okay. truck. You're right about the location. It's all about location, location, location. And that's why we moved um, our truck side out to 35 and 850 where we had visibility a few years ago. Um, we've been open since uh, the first week of January. We finished our second full month. And uh, I have to say I have a manager there that I think very highly of, a lady, um, who has uh, quite a bit of ex uh, experience in automotive service. And uh, I ask her what, what would her advice be um, to people that want to own business and want to work with the public. And she said to speak kindly and softly to everyone, treat everyone right. Good advice in business and life. She said don't just listen, but pay attention and hear and carry a big stick. <laughs> Very good. So, but she's a uh, she is. Uh, she came in with me um, when I uh, took the location. She went through the renovation with me. Spent a couple m uh, months training on the uh, uh, softwares and systems that we use. Um, uh, we work with Napa, so we're using at least a half different or more half dozen or more different uh, softwares and systems that are uh, provided by Napa uh, to deal with customers and billing and a lot of stuff. She spent several months training on all that, trained her replacement, and then she she left me and went to Gallup Police, opened that store, and she says she's rocking and stomping. Well, so. it, it is location, 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 but something else you've talked about that's very important in your company is customer service. Yep. You take that very seriously. Um, you know, talk a, a little bit about the importance of that in a, in a family-owned business especially. Mm. Well, we are family owned and operated and we have been for 36 years. This, we'll start our 37th year in June. 
Um, if I can't make my customer happy, they'll go find someone that will make them happy. Mm -hmm. uh, answer, I, I believe in answering the phone with a smile because when you have a smile on your face, the person on the other end of the line can hear that smile and you'll put a smile on their face. Um, there's a lot more to um, selling someone something than just the price. Um, you know, value is a combination of things and uh, making, uh, making our customer happy, that is uh, what brings them back. That's what keeps us in business next year. Uh, and that's why we're still here after 36 years. I have a colleague who owned a small business for a while and she said, you know, sick days, we, we didn't get sick days. You, you know, vacation, you worked and, and that was your livelihood. And if you weren't nice to people, you had no livelihood and customer service was your day or it, it just wasn't going to work. And I think people who maybe haven't owned their own business or had a family business sometimes don't grasp how important that friendly face, that customer service is. Nobody wants to go pay for their gasoline and have the clerk blow them off while she's talking to her boyfriend chewing bubble gum. Um, we've, all, we've all done that. We walk in the store, the clerk's too busy to take care of us, and we walk out complaining that we won't go back. And, you know, everybody has a bad day here and there. But I uh, try not to take it out on my customers, and I encourage all my employees to um, be friendly. Uh, and I always remind them that the face that they present to the public is not just their face, but it's their colleague's face, it's my face. It's the face of my company and, and each and every one of us. So what the public sees in their reflection is reflected back on all of us. Mm -hmm. Very true. Now. I've all, when you think of Red's Rolling Garage, um, I've always thought of the, the trucking and the towing industry. Um, do you work on regular vehicles? Any of us could take a car into your Eastern Avenue location Absolutely. for repair? It's, it's not just for trucking. Oh, no. Um, the, the Bidwell and the Gal Police locations are, are automotive and light truck repair. Um, all stages from an oil change to uh, transmission replacement. Um, our truck center is anything and everything related to a commercial truck. Diesel trucks one ton and up. Um, semis, um, it, 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 trailers, trucks, trailers, um, other various and assorted equipment. You know, we sell um, parts, both wholesale and retail. We, we uh, have a salesman that calls on customers and sells retail to other fleets um, within a six or eight uh, uh, county radius and into West Virginia. Okay, so it's a little bit of wholesale in addition to just your regular service. Yep, it is. A much bigger business than you think of when you just pass there on the bypass. Mm, yes. So you can do everything from, from the big trucks to my little mm -hmm. family mom minivan. I can tow your Volkswagen or your uh, tractor trailer. Uh -huh, so or you've maybe it. had a busy winter um, with the, the snow we've had. Mm, that that one time that we one had time, snow. Or, maybe twice. Maybe twice. That, yeah. Well, there were flurries today. According to the students, we're going to have a lot tonight. I'm not believing it. A little black ice. It. Mud's good. Mud is good. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. So um, we are the AAA provider in Gallia County, and a couple other motor clubs that I probably shouldn't name. Uh, there's a lot of motor clubs that we don't do, but AAA is a is a is a big part of our uh, towing business, and it allows us to make a lot of face to face contact with people. Um, unlocking their car, uh, if they run out of fuel, have a flat tire, get stuck in the ditch, or uh, need a jump start. Um, we probably see a couple hundred customers a month just with, with, just with AAA, and that uh, gives us a lot of uh, opportunities to, to make face-to-face -face contact and earn customers for repairs and, and then get them in our shops. And I have had all of those things at some point, I think, in, in the last 10 years. We all have. We all have. Um, so if anyone's interested in, in getting a hold of you, if they need a repair, um, want to get a quote, anything like that, what's the best way to reach you, check out hmm. your businesses? We have air, uh, just about every method of contact available to our customers. From the phone is there. It's 740-388-8547. You can reach us um, by email. At, um, uh, our, our website will direct you to email. Uh, and I think we have that across the bottom mm -hmm. of our screen right now, redsrollinggarage.com, mm -hmm. and they can get all the information they need. Yes, for emergencies, our uh, the number displayed on the screen is a 24-hour number, and, and then... Um, we do 24, 24 hours, seven days a week on emergency breakdowns. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been very informative and enjoyable, and I enjoyed our lunch and, and just getting to chat. 
woman to woman, business to business, mom to mom, which are thank you, Rebecca. The, the best conversations. I do want to just let you know a couple of things coming up. Um, we do have a business security forum here on the Rio Grande campus. That'll be March 16th, um, and that will involve Ryan Lippy who is a consumer educator from the Consumer Protection Section of the Ohio Attorney General's Office, um, Gabe Stewart from Ohio Valley Bank, um, Thomas Saunders, local attorney and chief warden here at the university. And, and that's a really important forum. Cybersecurity is a, a big issue, probably something that you guys even face a little bit. Um, Absolutely. Any business always interested in cybersecurity. So this is open to um, anyone, any business, any individual, students who are interested in learning more. We definitely invite you to be part of this event. And again, that's going to be March 16th from 9 to 1.30 here on the Rio Grande campus. Um, if you're interested in more information, you can contact uh, Pat Dingle here at the institution or Jennifer Dunn at 286-1605. Also, we will have Mike DeWine on with us in a couple of weeks, Ohio Attorney General, so we're excited about that opportunity as well. Be looking for those. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's been enjoyable. Thank you again, Tammy. Thank I really you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Dr. Johnston will be back with you next month for another edition of Voice of Rio Grande. Until then, have a good day.